about 31, let's take a look at uh, example five and we're gonna practice that function notation. And for A, B, and C, I'm gonna do them by hand. And then I wanna flip over to the calculator just to show you the store function on your calculator so you know how to use that. Um, and the store function, it, it's useful when you have numbers that you're plugging in for your x values. The store function, when I show it to you, it won't really help us for um, parts D through H. We're gonna have to do those by hand, which is fine, we'll do them. So I'm gonna do A through C by hand, flip over to the calculator, show you how to do A through C on the calculator, and come back and do D through, what do we have, D through H. Okay, so let's try A through C by hand. So I'm using function notation. I see one is in those parentheses. So I'm gonna substitute one wherever I see an X on the right side of this equation. So this will be negative one squared minus six times one plus four. And then we're gonna use PEMDAS. So one squared is one. Negative, oh, excuse me, negative one times positive one will ultimately be negative one. I have minus six times one, so that will be minus six plus four. So negative one minus six is negative seven. Negative seven plus four is negative three. So ultimately, f of one is equal to negative three. And again, one of the main advantages for function notation is I know I plugged a one into this function and got a negative three back out. So I can see both the x value and the y value when I use function notation. And if you had just written y equals negative three, well, that's fine, but you can't tell what the x value is if you use that notation. And that's one of the reasons we love function notation so much. Plus it's fancy. All right, let's try f of two. So I'm gonna plug two in wherever I see an x. So negative two squared minus six times two plus four. All right, we're gonna PEMDAS. Two squared is four. Four times negative one, negative four. I'm gonna subtract 12 and then I'm going to add four. And I can see here that the fours are going to cancel and I get negative 12. So for this part, for part B, I know when I plugged in two, I got negative 12 back out. And again, if you wanted to try to plot this function, I would know I would have an ordered pair at two, negative 12. Right? Now again, I wasn't asked to graph the function, but I just want you to see this function notation allows you to write those function values in ordered pairs. All right, let's try f of negative three. So we're gonna be trying to be real careful with all of our negative symbols here. And I might run into the margin, so I'm gonna write it here. So this is a negative of negative three squared minus six times negative three plus four. So again, I wanna be careful with PEMDAS and my parentheses. So negative three quantity squared, negative three squared is nine, but nine times negative one is negative nine. Si negative six times negative three, we're gonna add 18, and then I'm gonna add four. So when I start to look at this, well, negative nine plus 18 is nine, right? And nine plus four is 13. So here, I see that f of negative three is equal to 13, all right? Or if I was gonna graph this function, I have yet another ordered pair, negative three, 13. So just from a, b, and c, I have three ordered pairs. All right, so like I said, I wanna to flip to the calculator and show you how you can use the store function to help you find these function values, especially when we get into more complicated functions. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, Miss A here. I want to take a moment and show you the store function on your calculator. It's great for solving for function values. So as you saw when I was doing this by hand, you saw me plugging in 1 for x, 2 for x, and negative 3 for x, respectively for a, b, and c. So let me show you what your calculator can do so that you don't have to do all of that by hand. So there's a store function on your calculator and it's located above your on key. You see it says STO with a little kind of right arrow thing and that stands for store. We're gonna store something into the calculator's memory and for part A, I'm letting X be equal to one. So I'm gonna store one in for X. So this is what I'm gonna do. Oops, oh, I already did it. I'm gonna click one and I'm gonna hit the store button and then you'll see a little right arrow show up on your calculator screen. And I would like to store the value of one into X. So I'm gonna hit my X button, 
which is just to the right of that green alpha key, and then just hit enter. All right, and then your calculator is going to remember that x is equal to 1. Okay, great. And then what I would like my calculator to do is to evaluate the function expression of negative x squared minus 6x plus 4. So let me type that in. I'll do negative x squared minus 6x plus 4. And I'm going to hit enter in a moment. But before I do that, I just want to point out do you see that the subtraction sign, it's a little bit larger and kind of in the center of, of this um, letter, or I guess of this number, and this negative symbol, it's a little bit shorter and a little bit higher up. All right, now when I hit enter, you see it pop back out a negative 3, which we had just found out when we were doing it by hand that f of 1 was equal to negative 3. So then I can do the same thing for 2. I can just say, hey, calculator, can you store 2 into x? All right, and then hit enter. So my calculator will remember now that x is equal to 2, and I can retype this. Negative x squared minus 6x plus 4. When I hit enter, there it is, negative 12, which again, we got by hand, but it's kind of cool to see your calculator do it. And especially for part C, with that negative 3 there and worrying about squaring things, um, it's great to just say negative 3 and store that into x. And every time you hit this store button, it just overwrites the value that was there before. And some of you might even be thinking, well, this is all fine and good, but is there a way that I don't even have to write the negative x squared minus 6x plus 4 again? And there is. So if you want to go back through previous entries, your calculator has a little bit of memory in it. And if you look over the enter button, there's the word entry in blue. Now, if I hit second and enter, it's gonna call up my very, uh, my, my previous entry of negative three being stored into X. And I don't want that one, I want the one before that. So I'm gonna hit second and enter, and you see it goes back to negative X squared minus six X plus four, but now it knows X is negative three. When I hit enter, there's my 13. So you can start using your store button and your second and enter button to do a whole bunch of stuff. So let me just clear this out and show you again. If I was doing this, I would do one store x, hit enter, and I would type this expression in once, negative x squared minus 6x plus 4. And I'd say, all right, cool, negative 3. I need to do it again for x equaling 2 and x equaling negative 3. So now I would store 2 into x, and I don't want to type in negative x squared minus 6x plus 4 again, so I'll go back in time twice with second and enter, and it'll give me my value. Right? And then I'm going to store negative 3 into x. I'm going to go back in time twice, and it'll give me my value. Okay? All right, so I'm going to flip back to the paper, and we're going to finish, finish out the rest of example 5. I'll see you in a few. Bye. Okay, everyone, we're back. Let's take a look at parts D, E, and F. So now I can't use my calculator because I'm asking more theoretical type questions. What's F of A? What's F of diamond? And what's F of A plus H? And I especially want to focus on this A plus H because it's going to connect to part G. And these expressions are going to play themselves out, not so much in this class, but later on in your math careers if you're going up through calculus. All right, so F of A. It's the same idea. Whatever is in the parentheses gets substituted here and here. So if a is in the parentheses, I put a here and a here. So this will be negative a squared minus 6 times a plus 4. And that's it. I'm not even going to put the little multiplication dot. I'm just going to write minus 6a. There's nothing else for me to do there. That is the answer. f of a is negative a squared plus 6a plus 4. In the same way that f of diamond is negative diamond squared minus six diamonds plus four, whatever that happens to be. All right, I could do f of elephant would be negative elephant squared minus six elephants plus four. It doesn't have to make sense. It's just how function notation works. All right, so now let's try a plus h. This is gonna be a little bit more intricate, but it's the same idea. I had an x here, and I substitute it here and here. Okay, if I have a plus h, 
in the parentheses, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to put it here. So this is going to be negative of a plus h, the entire thing squared, because that is playing the role of x, right? This is my x, a plus h. So I have negative x squared, or negative a plus h quantity squared, minus 6 times a plus h, plus 4. Okay? All right. From here on in, it's a bunch of multiplication and foiling. We've talked a few times, you cannot distribute exponents over binomials. And when I say binomials, again, if we look inside those parentheses, there's two terms, a plus h, an a and an h, two terms. You can't distribute powers or exponents over addition or subtraction, only multiplication and division. I'm gonna need to foil this or double distribute it and I'm just going to do this in my head. a plus h squared is a squared plus 2ah from outer and inner plus my last of h squared. I'm going to distribute the 6, or really this negative 6, so this will be minus 6a minus 6h plus 4. Be careful. Don't forget that this negative 6 is getting multiplied to h. Make sure this says minus 6h, not positive 6h. So as I simplify this a little more, I need to also distribute the negative to all three terms here. This is negative a squared minus 2ah minus h squared minus 6a minus 6h plus 4. Right? That is a beast to write out, but that is our answer. That is what f of a plus h is equal to. All right, And here were our answers for these three. All right, so now that we have f of a plus h and f of a under our belts, we're going to look at a much more complicated quotient in part g. So I want you to keep this in mind. You know what f of a plus h is equal to. You know what f of a is equal to, right? We have this gigantic expression and this expression. So in part g, I'm going to subtract these two things, all right? And we're going to see what cancels out. A whole bunch of algebra is about to happen. So I'm going to scooch this up. So we have everything in view. All right, and then let's see how we're doing here. Okay, so this says take on the numerator, right? Just in my numerator, take f of a plus h, so all of this stuff, subtract out all of this stuff, and then divide that by h. So I'm gonna have a pretty long numerator, and a lot of algebra is going to happen. And this is a difference quotient, uh, when you get on in in calculus, this is going to have something to do with the derivative. Maybe you've heard of that term before, maybe you haven't, but it's going to become super important in calculus. This difference quotient, we look at it all the time. This just might be your first look at it in your math careers. So let's take everything we know about f of a plus h. Right? I'm going to take this entire six-termed polynomial. I'm going to take that entire thing and put it right here in my numerator. So I'm going to have negative a squared minus 2ah, I've got to write small here, minus h squared minus 6a minus 6h plus 4. I need to subtract out, I'll put that in parentheses just so we can see it, I need to subtract out f of a. Well f of a we found to be negative a squared minus 6a plus 4. All right, so let's just recap. This is a basic difference quotient, f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So what I did was I substituted this expression, f of a plus h, for our particular function. I substituted f of a with our particular function. And we found both of those quantities in parts f and d, respectively. All right, now I'm going to simplify the numerator because a lot should cancel out. When you go through these difference quotients, if all of the terms in your f of a wind up canceling, that's a good thing. That's your own little algebraic check that things are working. So let's see if we wind up canceling these three terms. So I'm going to have on this numerator, give me a moment. All right, so we're going to have negative a squared minus 2ah minus h squared minus 6a minus 6h plus 4. I'm going to distribute this negative. So negative 1 times negative a squared is positive a squared. Negative 1 times negative 6a is positive 6a. Negative 1 times positive 4 is negative 4. And that is all over h.
okay? Now for the sake of not skipping any steps, I'm gonna scoot this up and then I'm gonna rewrite this exactly as is and we'll start to see what cancels. So give me a moment. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite this and let's see what cancels. Give me just 10 seconds to rewrite it. Okay, and I said if all goes well, these three terms should cancel. So usually I start from the back. I have a minus four here, and I see I had a pair of, or it, it was paired with this positive four, and they cancel. Let's take a look at the positive 6a. I, I see it's got a pair with a negative 6a. They cancel. I see positive a squared and negative a squared up front here. They cancel. Oh, and just looking at my fraction, I see a small little typo I made. I changed the denominator from a to h. Let me fix that right now. All right, let's see what we have left. I have these two terms here and this term here. So let me clean that up because it's getting a little crowded. So I have negative 2ah minus h squared minus 6h all over h. And in that numerator, I see my greatest common factor. I can factor out an h, and I'm going to be left with negative 2a minus h minus 6 all in ratio to h. And so the last thing I can do is divide those two out. So after all of this, and I know it's a lot, but our answer here is that if we were looking for this quantity of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h, that is ultimately equal to negative 2a minus h minus 6. So here's my answer for this one. All right, so a bunch of algebra. So not only are we using function notation, I'm giving you your first look at a difference quotient and all of this stuff that cancels out. And we wind up with this expression, negative 2a minus h minus 6. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at part h. This is saying solve f of m equaling to 3. So let's find f of m first. I'm going to just put a little division line here, or division squiggles, I should say. Um, let's find f of m and set it equal to negative 3. So f of m would be equal to negative m squared minus 6m plus 4. And this problem has asked me to set f of m to negative 3. So I want to see when is negative m squared minus 6m plus 4 equal to negative 3. Now this problem is slightly different in that they didn't tell me the value of the independent variable, right? They left that as a letter, but they did tell me the value of the dependent variable. Or another way of saying that is they didn't give me my x-coordinate, but they did give me my y-coordinate. So it's equal to negative 3. It's a quadratic. So I have three methods, right? We always have those three methods. We can factor, we can complete the square, or we can use the quadratic formula. And I've said before, right, I like to factor these two methods, completing the square and the quadratic formula will always work. Factoring sometimes works. It depends on whether your polynomial is factorable. So let's find out. Either way, if you factor or use the quadratic formula, you need to set your equation to zero. And for many of you, you might just add three to this side. And that's great, but again, I like positive lead coefficients, so I'm actually gonna move the m squared this way, the 6m that way, and the four that way. But then I'm gonna write all of those terms on the left side here. So when I move the m squared over, or the negative m squared over, I'm gonna get m squared, I'm gonna add the 6m, I'm going to have negative 3, I'm going to subtract 4 and get negative 7. And as I look at my, my, um, my quadratic equation, I actually, it's not too bad to, to factor it. Um, there are two numbers that multiply to 7, excuse me, multiply to negative 7 and add up to positive 6. So this would be m plus 7 times m minus 1 equaling 0. So if I use the zero product property, right, either m plus 7 was equal to 0 or m minus 1 was equal to 0. So I get m equaling negative 7 or positive 1. And actually, we saw that this was going to be the case in part A. 
So let me just say, we, we should have seen this one coming. We saw this in part A. And I know part A feels like so long ago, but let me just scooch back up and remind you that when we plugged one in, we did get negative three back out. So ooh, we gotta scooch a ways. There it is. Ooh, let me get that a little bit more even. All right, so remember when we plugged one in, we got negative three back out. It just turns out that you can also plug negative seven in and you can get negative three back out. All right, so with that, we've, we've practiced using function notation analytically. And when I say analytically, that means you have something to plug into to analyze. I can plug one into this function and two into this function and analyze it. But I also want to look at function notation through, through the lens of graphs. So we're going to look at function notation graphically in the next example. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.